Senator Tukuda. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to speak on a point of personal privilege. Please proceed. Thank you. There comes the occasion when one decides to seize the day, carpe diem, and decisively leave the relative comfort of the Senate in search of higher office. Uh, we find ourselves face to face with such a departure today with our colleague, friend, and at many times a teacher to all of us over the past 29 years, as this truly is the final day of session for our Ways and Means Chair, David Ige. And so while most of you usually can't get me to stop talking, I really struggled with what I was going to say. After all, how do you thank someone who took a chance and a huge risk on a high school kid over 20 years ago and has never given up on them, no matter how much they probably wanted to, and maybe a few times probably should have? Or who was among the first to stand by you in the rain and wave when the odds were not on your side, never once asking or caring about Senate factions or alliances? And when you won, was always there to listen and give you great advice, so much so that one of your best programs you've done every session, every year since, since the beginning, was because of him. It's a tall order for such a special friend, so I decided that I would give him peace. <laughs> Chess pieces, to be specific. When I first met the chess club over 20 years ago, they weren't called the chess club. In fact, they were scattered between the chambers of the legislature, but they were still working very closely together and were very much aligned. And at one point in the Senate, they may have been called the G6 or G7 or G8, G8. Uh, sorry, they made that term cool way long before the Far East movement made any money of it. And I don't know if any of you know what song that is either. Um, but yesterday, I asked David's three closest friends two simple questions in my desire to give him peace. If you could be a chess piece, which would you be? And if David were a chess piece, which would he be? Les said he'd be a knight. I think he likes the fact that it moves in an L shape. <laughs> but strategically can be quite the multitasker, like Les is, in terms of taking out an opponent. Susie said she'd like to be a queen. I think we should all want to live in Susie's kingdom <laughs> because there would be no poverty, no hunger, the elderly would age with dignity, and the children would be cared for. Roz said she'd be the rook, one of the most powerful pieces on the board, but it also was the one that watches out for the team, and in many cases, and in many games, could deliver the final checkmate. When asked which piece would David be, Les and Roz both said, the queen, second most powerful piece on the board. And Susie said he'd be the king. So now I was still faced with a bit of a dilemma. Considering I can probably count on one hand the number of chess games I've actually won in my entire lifetime, by my calculations, I still had one too many queens to give him. And then my husband, who was primarily responsible for most of my chess losses, dropped a pearl of wisdom my way. I was reminded that there is a most humble of pieces that is often taken for granted by novice players like myself, disregarded by many, sacrificed without thought or strategy, even the name alone suggests being used by others for their own purposes, while in reality, their existence has been in constant service for the greater good. And yet the humble pawn, if you think about it, is still the only piece on the chessboard that can strategically, quietly, and decisively set the landscape of the chessboard as their moves are permanent. Unlike the other pieces, they do not move backwards. There's no backpedaling or second guessing for them. As I thought about all these skill sets, it dawned on me slowly that this is very much like the legislative career and personality of David Ige. How over the last 29 years, he has changed Hawaii's social, economic, educational landscape, as mentioned by Senator Kidani, as education chair, health chair, and most recently as ways and means chair and how time after time he has stepped up to support either the House or the Hawaii State Senate, taking on any role that was asked of him in service to the greater good. And now, I'm not that good at chess, obviously, but if I had to guess, 
in a game of chess and in a matchup, it's probably very similar to real life. That if it came down to a game where you had two queens against a king, well, I guess we know just what might happen. So David, I give to you on your desk before you a king, a queen, and a humble pawn. Just small tokens of peace to remind you of your friends and your time here at the legislature for wherever your next journey may take you.